Hello and good afternoon. This interview is coming straight from Kingston, Jamaica, recording for Black Q TV in Luke Lane. State your name, please. Bobs, Jabobs. How old is Jabobs? 65. Tell me about Jabobs. What's the positive and negative thing that you've learned? Well, the whole community, only the original people will not really know me still. Anyone I come from back in the days, mm -hmm. they will know me. They even know me, they know me by name. When you talk about locally, and come like, if, if matches lane are war, and you tell a one say you come from locally, and come like, you still that matches lane. Or you okay. come from Chance Lane, Aaron Street, Love Lane, the forest. The mother say, yeah, man, that matches lane. So, you understand? Like, downtown. This is um, this where all your family is? Yeah, niece, nephews, brother, sister, cousin, you know, a whole family come up. Crew of family live along the lane right now. Do you have any family abroad? Yeah, man. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Three brother. Two brother with me make three and one sister. Oh, why are they, why are they doing with themselves? Are they, they do the same lifestyle? My oldest brother right now, my Rasta man, he live down the lane. Mm -hmm. 80, 84 year old, him old. Next brother die, my sister still living. How, how did your brother die? Like some heart attack. Natural causes. Yeah, back in the 80s. We I just got fire on him dead. Okay. Have you been in any incident where you've been shot, stabbed? Yeah, man. All of that. Got jail, prison, me and coping. How much time have you been shot before? Around two times. You've been shot? And you were fortunate, obviously, to survive it? Yeah. Okay. Have you been stabbed? Yeah, I'm getting cut already. Not stabbed, cut. Tell me something, okay? As you're growing up in Jamaica, right, and knowing that the lifestyle in Jamaica is just gone, deaf, gone, deaf, they've not really lost much loyalty in Jamaica. So therefore, how did you manage to survive and make it through, knowing that there's not much loyalty here? Well, there's a lot of tribulation, you know. Mm -hmm. But jail, prison, back out, jail again, out, yeah. you know, reach foreign, same thing, jail, and just hustle, you know, just the regular routine survival. Do you think the lifestyle that you've lived it will cause people to copy you and want to be like you? Well, right now, to tell you the truth, you know, anyone who would like to be like me will go through a lot of tribulation. So I wouldn't advise no one. Even my last son, I have, I tell him every day, say, I don't want to be like me. I grew up like me. Mm -hmm. I grew up like me, that too rough. Uh, I got jail from me around 12. And I'm 14 or going on to 15 and I know him doing no self feel. So, thank God, you know. But I don't really like him go through with me, go through, because it's a hard road to travel and a mighty long way to go, you know. How did you earn a living as you was growing up? Did you work or did you sell drugs? Did you rob? What was your way, what was your way of living, surviving? Well, before reaching America, you know, we just go up on the road, go look it. You know, but in America now, also sell drugs, weed, you know, got jail, come out, weed, you know, yeah. back and forth. When you came out of prison, did you think about to try and find work and go straight, or did you just go back into, what caused you to go back into it, into the crime lifestyle? No, well, when I come from prison, I don't really go back into crime. I just hustle. Yeah. And from hustling till we reach a foreign. With everyone that grew up on the street, there's always that first offence that everybody does. So what was your first offence? Well, my first offence was just a crew of us, you know, just tear down the whole of downtown and blaze it a fire. And the whole of it just got jail, like around a dozen away. That's when the whole of it come from jail, the people them start calling it a dirty dozen. They call it a dirty dozen? Yeah. Because two of us, around 12 of us, we charge with pace, two breaking and lasting and all kind of stuff. How, and how long ago was that? That was from in 1967, and time around 12. Okay. And some 14, some 13, some 15, the biggest one might be around 17 or 16. God, so all of us grew up together that. We used to tear down the whole of the store them downtown. So where are all your friends now? Most of my friends them die out, you know. Okay, there's a few like Strength and Kopi and a few more when we can say yes, eh? and Fatag, we can say still, because even him and him grew up, ride skate, go see together and stuff like that. Most of my friends them die. And they, and they, they die through choosing the same lifestyle that like you yeah, chose? most of them die and works, you know. Go broke people, place, I go up and works, go rob and police, kill them, or 
So all them dead in a war, you know, tribal war, gunman and thing and a few of them die by sickness, you know. Yeah. They die by tragical death. Okay. So thank God I'm still living me and a couple of my friends them still living, you know. I think you would agree with me, if they did know what would happen, they would never obviously have gone down that route. Yeah, well, no man know him destiny. If you could look back now and do anything different, what would you do? If I could turn by the hands of time, mm -hmm. eh, I would listen to what my mother used to say. To stop, follow company and do this and do that. Maybe I wouldn't be in jail so many times and went to prison. You know? If you listen to them. a different man. Yeah, you know, maybe I don't know what could happen. As my brethren say, you know, whatever to happen must happen. Your destiny is your destiny. If you're dead by a gunshot, you will. If you die by old age or whatever, so thank God, you know. I believe that basically the cho the path you chose can also determine how long you live. All the use these days now that are picking up all these badness, guns and stuff like that, whatever. That life that they choose, it basically means that they could die next year, two, three years time, sooner rather than later. Right. Will you agree? Yeah, true, true. Well, mother tell them, say, just try and live the best them can and try and stop the violence and the war and things because it don't make no sense because it does make a lot of us end up in prison, never have no future of coming out. Some of us die young before our mother and our father. When our mother and our father, we should have buried them, and them have, we have buried them. Because most youth right now, you know, them gone before them mother, them gone before them father, and it shouldn't be like that. The only thing we have tell them, say, just try and be safe, you know, and do the best them can. But even even talk to some of them, I'm still going to say, oh, your day's done and you're old and... They don't believe they're going to yeah. get old. Ah, most of you don't, don't even think they're going to live to get old, so they feel like to all get old, you're done. You get soft. You've been to just America alone? Yeah. Have you spent time in, in America, no, prison I'm time? No, I got jailed a couple of times, well, never got no time yet. You got jailed? Yeah, if it's undercover seal and stuff like that. Okay, so was and you... was you, and them thing, man. Was you in America legally or illegally? Illegally. Illegally? Yeah, for 18 years. For 18 years? From in the 80s, I'm come out 2000. And and, uh, and that one offence that you committed got you deported? No, I don't get deported now. I just come home. I just get tired of America and just leave. Just buy my ticket and just get out of there. Cause as if I don't get out of there, I go end up in jail. And it's here a bond, so I just choose to come back here. Okay. T you see the prisons in America, right? And the prisons in Jamaica, how would you describe them? Well, I can't talk about the prison in America because I've never been to prison. So the jail, sir, sir, I beg your pardon. The jail is more convenient. It, it's more sanitary more than even in Jamaica. Because in jail in America, you have a bathroom you can go use, a yeah. toilet you can use. In Jamaica, if you want to use a bathroom, you have to wait till open up time, like the next morning. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, boy, I want to use the bathroom and go on the car and go sit on the tile bowl and use it. Because none of that unless they have a bucket. Or each man have them own thing with them urine and wait till the morning go empty it. So, as my brethren said, Jamaica's life, a jail life, yeah. is gone. Explain to me at what point would it be appropriate for them to stop and think about what they're doing? Well, that is on an individual basis then, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have a group of youth, you can talk to some of them and tell them to stop, but it's not all of them you can tell to stop. Because some going to feel like, say, the life is just not going to end. The, the glamour life is not going to end, so they're going to continue to do it until they go along now all. Wishing some might just sit down and just realize in themselves and say, you know what, I've got to stop. Do you have subjects? Do you, do, you, do you go to school? No, no, no. I don't really have no subject. You don't have any subjects at no. all? So basically, you, you chose the, the street life because of not having any subjects, unable to get work yeah, and might, stuff like that. It might be all of that too, yeah, but growing up, yeah. So basically, it is very wise then for the youth these days to get the education. Yes, because education is more important. Because uh, even me regret not getting the education I should have get. Maybe Look. if I get education, 
maybe yes. I wouldn't even get in so much problem. But uh -huh. just through not getting all that education and not listening to no one, more ignorant and, you know? Yeah. It's like, when I want to sit down and say, yo, stop that, but I say, oh, wait a second. You know, wishing maybe if me there more up here, them time me growing up as a youth, would I more realize and say, yes, I have to sit in and back up and, you know, know myself more, but it's after growing up now and reach certain age and stage. You look back away, it's a lot of time you wasted. Out. Yeah, it's like it does kind of get to realize, wake up and smell the coffee. Yeah, precious time wasted, yeah. Okay. So how has life changed for you? Well, it changed. That is a big difference because when we growing up, them used to have man who said I'm a bad man. But if you have a corner, a group of man, maybe I just tool could go on the corner. And maybe it's only certain man out of the crew and have anglings I'm a gun. Mm -hmm. Now, in this time, there's guns all over. Mm -hmm. And most of the youth them right now, them just know so they have some gun locked there, so. And them there, so. And, oh, man have them gun and not now go and just pick up a gun and just go do things. Uh -huh. A gun is a temptation. You know. Gun? Yeah. It gives you power. It gives you power, car. You have your gun, you walk with a man, bounce by you. When, if you don't have a gun, my brother say, yo, he say, sorry, he say, yeah, man, cool. But you have your gun, he say, yo, boy, if you know you're walking and wishing, ignorance, say, just yeah. you have your gun. You know, so, it's a big difference now than back then. You know? did, did you find that as a gangster, it was very easy to be cruel to people, but it was very hard to be nice? Well, to tell you the truth, no. I'm a loving person, you know. I never really have that intention of hurting people. Was there any rehabilitation program set in place to help you from changing ways? Well, that is like when I was in prison. Rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Like, you get things to do where if you're in the street, you only do like trade, carving, tailoring, whatever, whatever. Yeah, that's the only rehabilitation. Did you get a trade? Did you learn anything? No, well, I never really learned a trade in prison. Okay. I used to go to school. How long did you spend in prison? Well, I we get around 15 years and I do. 15 years in prison in Jamaica? Yeah. So how did you maintain that? Oh, well, I do, uh, me, me never do the whole 15. I do around seven parole. Okay. Yeah. And, wh and what are the situations like? What's the conditions like in the prison? Dirty. Explain Mucky. dirty. Mucky. Prison in Jamaica is something different because, as brethren say, you have all three man, four man, and one little cell, and a blanket and a mattress, and the next two man have to sleep on the beer concrete, and man have to do it by terms, some man tie up in a, this bunk in a day, in a them cut, yeah. and stay up there and do it by terms. When you come down, the next man go up the car, there's no space. If a man eats him, but everybody smell it. If a man pee, you know, it come like him the right in front there, say everything. Him have no can of him go wrong or use the toilet or So it's a bit inhumane then? Yeah, inhuman, yeah. You know, so yeah, your mind of solid else, you go crazy. Mentally, yeah. how, how easy it is to fall short in these prisons? Yeah, if you have a if you're not mentally strong man, you get crazy. You bug out. Yeah. You, know, you have to mentally strong and have people Dear for you, looking out for you, getting a visit, and you have, you're getting your two pieces of soap, whatever. You know, if you're not really getting that support, if you don't strong up here, you're gone. Right now, if you could talk to, like, just like the youth, them, like your son right now, and they're saying, right now, daddy, right now I want some quick money. I can't manage the nine to five, waking up each morning, going to bed at nine, five o'clock in the evening to get back up again to do a nine to five, to go earn a small amount of money a week. I want big money. I want big money so I can buy cars, so I can buy jewelry. They explain to them about the fast life. Well, if you want big money, you're going to have to run risks out there and the things that you're not supposed to, that mean you can end up in jail. And if you go to jail, it's better it was out there earning a little money more than you locked in jail, not earning nothing at all. Or you locked in jail, you, can't, you don't have your freedom. You can't open your mm -hmm. door when you want. You know, you have to wait until someone come and open your door for you. Mm -hmm. So that is a big difference. You know, in jail, you have to wait someone come and let you out. 
you're outside here, you might do have no money, but at least you can let out yourself. Just like the curfew, you're under curfew, two day curfew, you're not supposed to go outside. If you go outside, you're going to get in problem. You're supposed to stay in. So rather stay in until the two day up or go outside and go under wicked lock. Which one is more better? Better you stay inside. Was it really all worth it? The lifestyle of like growing up and down with guns or you know doing no. the badness and stuff no, like that was it really worth it? It never worth it because it cost enough of us to go to jail, prison, lose our life when we could hear living. Some of us just get our first kid and we start pick up gun and your kid don't get to know you. Hey, more grow up, come here. Well, my father was a bad man or my father was this and that. You know, don't get to know you. Did anybody help you as you were growing up? Was anybody guiding you? Well, when my mother used to guide me and try to counsel me and tell me stop this and stop walking with friends and stop, you know? Yeah. That was my mother used to do that. And my two brothers never had time to notice me because they bigger than me. I was the last one. Do you think the government in Jamaica could have done more to help you? Help me like an individual? Yes. Me? No, not really. Not really. I was the first one to help myself by listening to my mother, go to school, don't call school, stop for a bad company, and maybe I would gain more, I'd learn more, but I never used to do that. Yeah. I used to in the street, you know, in and out of jail as a little juvenile, go to poor school, run from poor school, police will look for me, yeah. and then hold me again, I'm going back to jail, poor school. That's the life I used to live. You chose the bad life. So, okay, so what have you got from that? I would say I would regret choose that life because my beef, I was living that, choosing that life, I'd be a better man today, but thank God, you know, all counts, I still got life. Well, as I tell you, most of my friends I grew up with, some of them dead and gone for years. Some of them never get free, even grow white here like me. Yeah. You understand? It's just a few of us still living, you can count right now, say yes, them still about living. So, you have to keep together, keep that band together and listen to say, sometimes we can't sit down and talk about way back in the days when we were youth and what we used to do. Because these new friends now, you can't sit on them and talk about nothing. The new friends these days? And these new friends now, they are younger youth than we. Them don't want to hear what we have to say. The youth of these days? Yeah. They don't want to hear what the elder them officer right now. Because the only thing the elder them officer them say, yo, you don't have to stop the certain thing and them no want to hear that, because the motel we say, our oh, day is done, I feel them time now. You know? Yeah. So, all you have to do is pray for them, and that's God guide and protect them, that's them live as long and old as we live. Because even we never expect we would live until we old, till all younger, like you know, call it elder. We never expect that. Because the rate we used to go under, we never expect our love for our friends to see us go so. Thank God for we still living and reach over 50, 60 and still going strong. You know? Tell me something, okay? Have you ever ended up in jail and you actually sat down, think back on what you've done and actually got emotional, broke down in tears and wish you never did it? No, not really. Not really. You've never? No, I never really did that jail and cry about it, you know? Yeah. You just know some of that jail and sometimes you, you feel emotional, yeah, frustrated, yes, but you just know, say, it's one of those things, cause you do the crime, so you have to be here the time. And sometimes you go to jail, you don't even do the crime where you go to jail for. But you know you don't do others, so it's like, yeah, it's a payback. Oh. Yeah, did, did, did family and friends stick by you while you was in jail? Yeah, 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 never shot a visit and them stuff there. I always get my visit, my clothes, my toothpaste, soap, tissue, whatever, until the time up. I believe that in every little team or gang, there's always one or two or three that turns out to be a Judas, an informer, or something of that nature, yeah. okay? But when you're growing up with your friends, them you say, no, man, I'm my best friend, man. I'm not doing them things, man. I'm not doing I'm sure you had friends like that as well, yeah, right? Yeah, it's kind of my friends where do all over that prison and some of them just bug out and do things where we don't really approve of. Uh -huh. And we know, say, our friend, yes, but I'm gone the next week, so... We Did you ever believe that we would have gone the next week? No. You never believed that? No. Why? 
Eh? Why? Because there's a conference where we're having our friend, like how we have conference in ourselves. Eh? We go to jail, we know we're not going to bow. We don't have a fall victim to certain dirty system and mm. we find that some of our friends will even rate even more than we, even tougher than we out in the street. And we uh -huh. find them go there and them bow to the system. But as them say still, it's not everybody going all strong. Some going f give up by the wayside, you know? Yeah. Yeah, all of us do tribulation and not all of us going all across and carry it. So I was going to throw them across and just give up. So I just part of life, you know. Yeah, well, right now, when I tell any youth right now, the guns and the drugs and all the glamour life and the famous life they're living, it don't worth it because at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have fame today and tomorrow you have sorrows. So it's best you go out there and try and live life for your family and your friends, you know, and try to do the best you can and do the honest things and don't do nothing dishonest because end of the day we messed up 